Hi, my name is Ella J. Smith and I'm a writer of urban fantasy novels. Today I'm going to read one of my own stories. Uh, it's a very short, short story. Every Sunday we meet up with a group of fellow writers in Frankfurt and we play writing games. We get uh, different uh, quotes and prompts and usually come up with something really interesting that is very different from what we usually write. So today my story is uh, a little bit creepy, um, obviously urban fantasy, and I really hope you enjoy it. This place needed more lights for sure. Kenny stopped inside the bar room. Glasses were clinking and the smell of smoke permeated the darkness. Judging by the sounds, there were plenty of customers enjoying the local ales. Kenny closed his eyes, hoping that they adjusted quickly. He felt like a fool standing by the door. When he opened them again, he made out the shapes of groups of men scattered across the room. A lone candle set on each table, and for a split second, Kenny wondered if there'd been a power cut. The glow shining through dirty windows from outside made that unlikely. Carefully, he picked his way to an empty seat by the bar. He swung himself onto the stool and squeezed his eyes together, trying to read the labels on the bottles behind the huge barman. What'll it be? No greeting, no smile, just a deep voice that reverberated in the sudden silence. As if Kenny's next words were of utmost importance, he felt rather than saw every person in the bar turning towards him. I'd like... His voice broke off. He cleared his throat and tried again. I'd like a whiskey. Please, he added as an afterthought. The man turned around and grabbed a bottle from the top shelf. Kenny's eyes followed his arm all the way to the top. Jesus, the guy had to be at least six foot six tall. Kenny expected a shirt to rip from the stretching motion. The guy was a monster. A light caught his attention. He turned his head and looked straight at a man, lighting a cigarette. What's a nice man like you doing in a bar like this? As a pickup line, it lacked originality. Somehow Kenny guessed that there was more to this, though. He was still considering how to let the guy down gently when his gaze fell onto the man's fingers. As the cigarette flared, his nails came into sharp focus. Long, yellow and pointed at the end, they looked nothing like human fingernails. Kenny's eyes snapped up to the man's face. He'd avoided looking too closely to avoid giving the guy any wrong ideas. The man's yellow eyes stared back at him. His nose slanted sharper than normal and his skin had a green metallic sheen. Here, came the barman's gruff voice. He slid a glass in front of Kenny then put a candle holder down. He carefully pushed a white stub into the ceramic container, then lit the flame. Ken's eyes widened. The barman's hand was narrow brown with only two stubby fingers. We're so glad you could join us, whispered the voice next to him. Drink up. Dinner is about to be served. The barman bent lower, making sure that Kenny would hear him. His hot breath huffed into Ken's face. The candlelight reflected the sharp horns protruding from the massive forehead. Yes, boy, drink up. You'll go nicely with the whiskey sauce I've prepared. The guests have been waiting all night. Kenny gulped. This was what they'd been waiting for. There'd been rumours about this place for months, people disappearing after visiting this particular establishment. Reports of shifter sightings. Newly promoted special agent Kenneth Starks of the SOB, the Shifter of Fence Battalion, was the perfect undercover agent for the job. His meek and inoffensive appearance belied a battle-hardened body and a mind as sharp as minotaur horns. So far he only had evidence of big talk, he needed more. He made his eyes wider, fully aware of the effect it had on the arrogant shifters around him. Sure enough, the minotaur barman huffed out a laugh, blowing back Ken's non-regulation hair. Don't worry, if you give us no trouble, we'll make it quick. Although I can't promise it won't hurt. I'll poach you like a lobster so the skin comes off easily, but it won't hurt long. He winked at Ken. Winked. If Ken hadn't been around the block a few times, he would have blanched. He had to continue play acting, though. He slipped off his bar stool and backed away slowly, as if overcome with horror. The team would bail him out within half a minute when he gave the signal. But he needed to be in a better position to survive those 30 seconds. Two more backward shuffles and he was wedged between the end of the bar and the wall. His back covered, he held up his hands, pleading for his life. In front of him the minotaur, the lizard, 
and what looked like half-shifted hyenas stood shoulder to shoulder. One of the mangy creatures stretched out a claw towards him, so close that Ken nearly gacked on the rancid exhales. Don't gut him yet, Sam, the bull bellowed. They go off real quick. Remember that guy last week? He tasted like shit after you tore his arm off. The hyena pulled his paw back, hissing in disapproval. Ken had had enough. He pushed the button under his leather bracelet. His team would be here in no time at all. Judging by the hunger in the creature's eyes, he was running out of time. The barman apparently agreed with the sentiment. Before Ken could react, two massive, hoof-like hands had clamped tightly around his forearms. He tried to protest, but the scream stuck in his throat as he was whirled around his axis to land on the bull's shoulder hard enough to push the air out of his lungs. Within seconds, he found himself in a well-lit kitchen. A man-sized pot of boiling broth sat on the stove. Fuck, this wasn't good. There was still no sign of his team. Three steps brought the minotaur within reach of the pot. Ken struggled, kicking, pounding his fists at the massive creature's body. He might as well have been a kitten for all the damage he did. That's right, keep struggling. The adrenaline will season your flesh. Well, fuck, Ken stopped moving. If you had to die, you wouldn't give them the satisfaction. Good boy. For that, I'll lower your head first into the pot. How about that? Let nobody say Roger knows no mercy. Roger's rumbling laughter shook Ken's body like a rag doll. Drop him, chuckle boy. Oh, thank fucking God, saved by the bell. The relief made Ken's head spin. His partner's gun pointed steadily at the creature's head. Even his thick skull wouldn't survive the impact of a 45 mil. The bull considered his options, then shrugged. Next thing, Ken found himself on the floor, rubbing his bruised butt. Asshole, he muttered. His partner's amused chuckle brought a grimace to his face. He loved his job. But sometimes, just sometimes, he wished he was back on the human homicide squad. People were easy. At least they didn't try to eat each other, usually. He grabbed his partner's arm and allowed himself to be pulled, pulled to his feet. In the barroom, all the lights had been switched on and several dozen shifters were being processed by uniform. All in a day's work for the SOB. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, I'm going to put a transcript on my website, www.ellajsmith.com. And if you like this, I'm planning on putting up videos maybe, I don't know, once a week or maybe once every fortnight. But uh, yeah, subscribe and you won't miss out on them. Thank you very much.